Welcome. Yeah, in a moment we'll get some ch church bells from next door. I really like to encourage everyone to hear them, to receive them, and to notice if there's resonance or dissonance and how the heart, mind, body responds to the experience, the arising and passing of the sound. Resting into the body, just feeling the body settling into the chair. Maybe feeling the feet settling into the floor. Giving yourself this gift of rest, this opportunity to simply stop and be and receive the unfolding of experience internally and externally. Noticing how it feels in the body now, in the heart, in the mind. Resting. Opening. Receiving. Receiving the thoughts and emotions. Sound. Sights, tastes, smells, and all manner of tactile experience. It all can be received. Perhaps noticing how we're relating to it. Liking, disliking. Thinking things should somehow be other than they are. In this life. We practice to notice, to meet ourselves in the moment. Just as it is, just as we are. Unfolding, ever-changing. 
like all conditioned experience. The conditions are sufficient such that the sound of the bell arises. It's sustained for a while. And it passes away, just like you and me. It's all impermanent, all conditioned, as are our thoughts and emotions. With practice, we can come to notice them rather than being consumed by them or driven by them. Oh, this is what's here. Okay. And there can be a bit of a no problem. I got this. I got you. Cultivating our ability to be here for ourselves, to show up for ourselves as we are ever-changing, always unfolding. And I found that for me, resting was a great support, a great foundation for this capacity to receive reality just as it is. And gradually, there's been a falling away of a need or desire or compulsion to try to make the moment different than it is, or to try to make someone else different than they are, to try to change the past. Good luck with that, right? Oh, it's like this. Okay showing up for this now. Beginning by resting, allowing the body to rest. feeling, experiencing the body resting here. being held by the hug of gravity. The embrace of the earth. If, if our feet are planted firmly on the floor, feeling that contact, that support, that stability, the ground, wherever our legs are, feeling that foundation of support, Feeling the pelvis and hips dropping down. Whether you're sitting, 
standing or lying. Feeling this connection of the lower body to the earth. Just as we root down into the earth, we can lift up to the sky. Lengthening the crown of the head up, out if you're lying down. Lengthening the spine, long and strong, feeling that wakefulness or alertness. Broadening the shoulders, taking up our space. Noticing how this lengthening and broadening of the torso impacts the body, impacts the heart-mind. Perhaps it stimulates a feeling of alertness or curiosity, openness, attentiveness. Oh, what's here? Awake. As we feel length and breadth, balanced by the grounding and stability of the lower half of the body, so that we are both awake and relaxed, alert, and at ease, both. And of course, we might tip too much to one side or the other if we're too attentive, we can get really tight. That doesn't feel good. And if we're too relaxed, we can fall asleep and that is not what we're going for. Happens, no problem. When we balance, they balance one another and we balance by attending to both. Wakefulness and relaxation. Inviting the heart, mind, body to rest. And be open, curious, receptive. Noticing that we are already aware, perhaps aware of the sound of my voice or the content of the words, perhaps aware of other sounds or the sensations of the body that we've been exploring. Awareness is already here, it's happening. What if you started to become interested in or curious about this experience of being aware? Or 
perhaps aware of the changing object of awareness. The sound, the breath, the thought, an emotion. These various experiences arising and passing, arising and passing, and awareness meeting each of them indiscriminately. Oh, it's like this. Knowing, being. receptive. Present to yourself. What a gift it is to be present. Of course, we get lost in stories and emotions, assessments, pulled back into the past and out into the future, or judging the present. No problem. This is what happens. When we're aware of it, when we're noticing it, when we're tracking it, we can get a little space. I was like, oh, this is just what's happening. We're not caught by it. I'm not believing it quite as much. It's just a conditioning. Of course, there's a residue from the experiences that have preceded their present moment, every present moment, every experience, there's a residue. No problem. Simply the natural unfolding of conditioned experience. We can know this. And we can practice to incline the heart mind toward love, toward care toward gentleness, toward friendliness. Finding your own words, but maybe trying on some of mine first. I'm here for you, we might say to ourselves. And then we practice to really be here for ourselves, be here with ourselves. I'm here for you, right? Not hollow words, but an embodied 
practice or an embodied experience of being present to, for, and with ourselves, this heart, mind, body, this moment. I got you. I got you. Whether that's a got as a form of catching, right? When we start to fall over or trip or sink, stumble, I got you. Or it's I got you as a form of understanding, comprehending, I got you. Understanding ourselves, meeting ourselves, taking the time to listen in deeply. Or maybe saying to ourselves, you're important to me. Noticing how that feels in your own heart, mind, body. Perhaps there's some bristling or some resistance, some past experience of this heart, mind, body that says, That's not what you've shown me. Okay, maybe not. In the past, and what are we doing now? You're important to me. The urge to get into an intellectual discourse about how you are or not important. Maybe not. Following that urge, noticing, knowing, noticing if it arises. And turning toward ourselves through paying attention as an act of love such that our nervous systems can experience their import, showing ourselves how we value ourselves now. I got you. I'm here for you. You are important to me. I love you. These are messages of Metta. Metta is worthy of cultivation. Finding your own way in. 
trying these words on and finding your own, your practice of befriending yourself just as you are in this moment, moment after moment. Resting, opening, receiving. Noticing that you are aware. Maybe noticing what you are aware of. and getting curious about your relationship to the present moment. Noticing the gross or subtle ways that we push away or chase after. The ways we miss the moment or get caught in a fixed belief or view. Greed, aversion, delusion. And also notice in those moments when we're like, oh, it's okay. Wise attitude, wise relationship, right relationship, right attitude. Oh, oh, it's okay. Any moment that's absent of greed, aversion, or delusion, that's freedom. That's the fruit. touching the spaciousness of those moments. And as that experience becomes more familiar, it becomes more available. Not because we're making it happen, but because this is the natural unfolding. No problem, those moments of no problem. My pen right. Very common Thai expression. Tasting the freedom 
of no problem. Resting, opening, receiving. I got you. Noticing how you are, this heart, this mind, this body. What's going on in there? Can you meet it? Whether it's stormy or serene, can you be with it? Can you be present to it? I got you.
resting in awareness of the direct arising and passing experience, whatever it may be. It matters not what we are aware of, but rather that we are aware. And as this awareness is cultivated, the heart mind naturally over time moves toward the wholesome and away from the unwholesome as awareness builds. We don't have to do anything. The only personal effort necessary is the inclining toward awareness. Wisdom unfolds naturally as we are aware. Things are seen more clearly. Wise action emerges. Over time. Attuning to awareness. Resting and opening. Receiving, arising and passing experience.
open. Receptive. Curious, what's alive in this heart mind? And just as an experiment, noticing how it feels to invite a little tiny Buddha smile onto your face. Is the heart impacted by a little lifting of the corners of the mouth? Subtle, right? Don't, not till you feel uncomfortable. Just like a little, what happened? Just to know and then let it go. Right? Allowing the face to be as it is, but inviting that inner smile. And noticing how that impacts the heart mind. Does it invite a softening? Or maybe resistance arises. Just know. Coming to know for your own self what supports freedom and ease. And knowing, of course, that it's always changing. The learning is so important and can be so illuminating. Receiving the bell. Just allowing the sound to arise and pass. A little wake up sound to let you and the bell know it will be invited to sound. And then two full invitations of the bell. Receiving, noticing how it impacts the heart, mind, and body. Continuing to cultivate awareness of the present moment. Expanding the field of awareness to include movement, 
and listening in to this heart mind body to discern how this body might want to move and then honoring that small movement or large movement maybe standing up big stretches whatever feels good and as you're ready expanding into sight Thank you for your practice.